Hey there everyone! I bet a lot of you have wondered what it would be like to travel back to the age of dinosaurs. Or maybe, just maybe, you've dreamed about going even further back in time, to the Cambrian period, the era where modern multicellular life first began to emerge. But here's the real question. Could you actually survive in the environment of those ancient times? Was Earth's environment always as familiar and comfortable as we know it today? Welcome to our channel! In today's video, we are going to dive right into these questions and uncover the answers together. Alright then, let's get started! The Great Thaw the Cambrian period began about 538 million years ago and lasted for over 53 million years. It finally gave way to the Ordovician period around 485.4 million years ago. When people talk about the Cambrian, the first thing that always comes up is the incredible boom and spread of multicellular life. Scientists even have a name for this phenomenon. They call it the Cambrian Explosion. From a geological perspective, this explosion refers to the sudden and massive appearance of countless fossils left behind by these new life forms. For a long time, people thought life itself began during the Cambrian period, but we now know this isn't the case. Life had already been around long before that, and researchers continue to uncover more and more evidence showing just how ancient these origins really are. In fact, it's now widely accepted that life existed as far back as 4 billion years ago, just 500 million years after Earth itself finished forming. As for the Cambrian period, this is when creatures with more advanced outer shells, something like hard exoskeletons, began to spread far and wide. These creatures, with their tough body armor, left behind far more fossils than the softer-bodied organisms that came before them. Just before the Cambrian began, during the Ediacaran period, Earth emerged from a massive ice age that had locked the planet in glaciers for millions of years. By that time, life had already made great strides forward, giving rise to what we now call the Ediacaran biota, the first multicellular organisms that had direct evolutionary ties to modern life forms. But it wasn't until the Cambrian that these organisms really grew up, developing full-fledged skeletons and protective structures. The Earth during the Cambrian period looked very different from the world we know today. In the southern hemisphere lay the massive continent of Gondwana, while just to its north sat three other major landmasses, Laurentia, Baltica, and Siberia. While there were smaller continents scattered throughout the surrounding oceans, these four were the main players on the global stage. Temperatures across these lands were generally warm, averaging somewhere between 72 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. There were no polar ice caps, and winters only brought a mild drop in temperature. So, in a world that felt more like a giant greenhouse, it's no surprise that life took off and flourished at such an incredible pace. This was the era that saw the rise of trilobites, creatures similar to modern-day crustaceans, along with giant shrimp-like predators called anomalocaridids, and sponge-like organisms known as archaeocyathids. Sexual reproduction and predation became widespread, and this rise in hunting and being hunted made ecosystems more complex and drove even greater biodiversity. At this point, you might be thinking that the Cambrian period sounds like a dream vacation spot for modern humans. The weather was pleasant, the climate was stable and there weren't any massive sea predators around to worry about. Sounds like the perfect getaway, right? You could probably swim freely across those vast oceans without a care in the world. But unfortunately, the reality wasn't quite that simple. The Hell of the Cambrian Period So, let's imagine you've been inspired by everything you've just heard about the flourishing life during the Cambrian, and you hop into a time machine and land somewhere on the vast continent of Gondwana. What's the first thing you see? Odds are, you'll immediately think you've made a mistake and ended up in the wrong place. Here's the thing. The explosion of life and rapid development we talked about? That was all happening in the ocean. The land during the Cambrian period was nothing but barren, desolate desert. In fact, it wasn't until the Devonian period, long after the Cambrian and Ordovician, that life really started to get a foothold on land. And the absence of developed land ecosystems doesn't just mean you'll miss out on seeing ancient forests or snapping selfies with the ancestors of dinosaurs. 
No, it's a much bigger problem than that. Without plants or invertebrates, there's nothing to create soil. During the Cambrian, there was no soil at all, just bare rock with patches of scattered sand here and there. In other words, the surface of the Earth back then looked a lot like the barren landscapes of Mars or the Moon. You might even compare it to the Atacama Desert, an endless stretch of lifeless wasteland. But the harsh, empty landscape wasn't even the most dangerous thing you'd be up against. The real threat was that the atmosphere of the Cambrian wasn't something modern humans could safely breathe. Oxygen levels back then were roughly the same as today, sitting at about 21%. But carbon dioxide levels? Those were on a whole different scale. While today's air contains just a fraction of a percent of carbon dioxide, the Cambrian atmosphere was loaded with somewhere between 7 and 9%. To help you understand just how dangerous that is, let's take a quick look at how breathing works. In a normal environment, the process of breathing goes something like this. Modern air is mostly made up of nitrogen and oxygen. When you take a breath, the nitrogen stays in your lungs while the oxygen passes through the walls of your alveoli and enters your bloodstream, which then carries it throughout your body via a network of arteries. At the same time, your blood picks up waste products from your tissues and transports them back to your lungs through your veins. When you exhale, you release those waste products, along with the nitrogen your body doesn't use, back into the air. But the Cambrian atmosphere was a bit denser and under higher pressure than the air we breathe today. And when air pressure rises, nitrogen can dissolve into your blood, causing nitrogen narcosis a condition that triggers excitement, erratic behavior, dizziness, hallucinations, and loss of coordination. But the real danger comes from the huge amounts of carbon dioxide that would also seep into your bloodstream. As I mentioned earlier, carbon dioxide levels were far higher back then than they are now. Just a few breaths of that air would lead to hypercapnia, in simple terms, carbon dioxide poisoning. The symptoms? Drowsiness, nausea, vomiting, blurred vision, and eventually unconsciousness, followed by death. In short, it's a life-threatening situation. Without special protective gear to shield your body, stepping into the Cambrian would be like landing on another planet. You wouldn't survive for long. To explore the Cambrian Earth, you'd need something like a spacesuit filled with modern air, but wearing that would get unbearably hot, especially if you found yourself deep inland, surrounded by endless desert. So if you're planning to set up camp, sticking close to the ocean would be your best bet. After all, that's where all the interesting stuff was happening anyway. Along the coastline, in the areas where the tides ebb and flow, you might catch a glimpse of the earliest invertebrates and algae, slowly carving out new biomes. These creatures still relied heavily on water, so they weren't truly land-based life forms yet, but they were laying the groundwork. In fact, it was during the Cambrian that these organisms began the process of terraforming the planet, starting to build the kind of soil we're familiar with today. So, the coastlines would be the closest thing to landscapes we'd actually recognize. But even so, I wouldn't recommend going for a swim in the Cambrian seas. Even if, by some miracle, you could breathe that carbon dioxide heavy air without needing a spacesuit, it wouldn't make much difference. As we've already covered, those ancient oceans were absolutely teeming with life. While Cambrian predators probably wouldn't pose much of a threat to humans, there's something else far more dangerous that you shouldn't forget about – bacteria. Sure, Cambrian bacteria were pretty primitive compared to modern pathogens. But the real problem is that these ancient bacteria would be completely unfamiliar to your immune system. Your body simply wouldn't have any defenses against germs from that far back in time which means you could easily catch something dangerous and nasty without even realizing it. And if you did get sick and came back to the present day, strolling around town like nothing happened, you could end up unleashing a brand new epidemic. So if you really want to dive into the Cambrian Seas, your only safe option would be to use a bathyscaphe, a deep sea submersible. And when you head back home, you'd better make sure that submersible gets thoroughly disinfected. In short, if a modern human were to suddenly find themselves in the Cambrian period, without the proper preparations or protective gear, they almost certainly wouldn't survive. And the same goes for Cambrian creatures too. If you wanted to bring any of them back to the present day, you'd need to keep them in a specially designed enclosure, carefully maintaining the air inside to match the Cambrian environment. So no, you wouldn't be able to pet a trilobite. 
Moral of the story, be careful what you wish for. And whatever you do, don't jump into a time machine without the proper instructions or preparation. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and share it on social media. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.